What would you do if your government lied to you and told you that cannabis made minorities kill, rape, and pillage? Lend me your ear and I'll show you, my dear, how it saved my sweet little dog from cancer. Oh, I get high with a little help from my friends. Oh, my dog didn't die with a little help from my friends. Oh, I'm going to try to erase years of propaganda for your hungry sick headaches and red pill you to death with a little help from my friends. Hey. Welcome to the Flower Power Hour podcast with Jesse and Tino. Welcome, everybody. Hey, Jesse. How hey. you doing, brother? Hey, Mike. Hey, little girls. We got extra guests in the in the studio today. Try not to fart, ladies. All right, Jesse. <laughs> we are going to talk about uh, some um, success stories besides Shorty. Um, if it, that, that video I just made today, by the way, I got to say shout out to technology because when I was a struggling musician back in the 90s, we, it would take uh, days to create what I just did in an, in an hour, in less than an hour, that intro song. So, um, Jesse, take it away. We're going to talk about RSO. We're going to talk about Elizabeth Gray Tatum. We're going to talk about Christina Marie. We're going to talk about Brandy Sharp and her dogs and RSO. Did I already say that? Talk about RSO and the difference between RSO. By the way, people, um, most of the people are probably hearing this from the My Dog Beat Cancer Facebook page, closed group. Um, there are rules. There are um, there's a pinned post and video that you are supposed to watch, listen to, and read um, as uh, upon joining the group. So if you haven't, do that immediately because we address all this stuff, especially the difference between RSO. And what we're what um, the healing project does, and the difference in RSO, and um, the healing project, and the entourage effect. There's so much stuff. Uh, Jesse, go ahead. Cool. So for the last couple of months, I've had a lot of people calling me and just being very afraid of what we're doing as far as uh, dosing their dogs and is it safe? Is it not safe? And they're hearing things from other people that are basically posting their opinion on social media. Uh -huh. So I, I just wanted to clear up a little bit about what is it? Can it hurt your dog? Is it something that you should worry about? Whatever. Uh, basically, the bottom line is that there's vets right now that are really, really not in the know of what's happening with cannabis. And so because of that. Oh, yeah. They're, not, they're not, not allowed to talk about no, it. No, they don't have the knowledge. They haven't been trained. They haven't been in the know. So because of that, they don't necessarily talk about it and in california they just like in the last two three months they allowed vets to talk about cannabis wow and so that that's a i did not know that a bill that was just passed and people are actually vets are actually allowed to talk now about just cannabis the subject mm -hmm. and so because, by the way by the way people that are listening let us know in the comments send us messages whatever what your vet says when you bring this up, because it's been in my experience, I just moved to LA from Vegas, uh, God, it's not just about a year and a half, and they're, they just, it's like, you bring it up and they, they just get this glossy eyed look on their face and then they just, it's like they don't hear you. And from what I understand, it's just they, they're not supposed to. They, there's no research because it's still a schedule one drug, which is ridiculous. If you don't know what that means, the government has declared cannabis a schedule one drug, which means there's no medicinal value to it. Um, so they're like putting it in with meth and heroin, even though heroin is oxycontin or however you say that. So it's still a schedule one drug, which is ridiculous when you think of like the, the people like um, Charlotte Figgy, who Charlotte's Web was created uh, named after because of the uh, she was having 300 seizures a week and then she started doing the CBD and went down to like one a week. So anyway, I'm sorry I, I interrupted. Go ahead. <laughs> no, you're cool, brother. So what what I was going to talk about is the the relationship that you have with your dog. Obviously, is that's number one. I don't ever want to talk about like, mm -hmm. hey, this I don't value your idea of what you think it is. But the reality is that THC is very safe. Very, very safe. If it wasn't, you know, any vertebrae who would take it, which is what dogs and cats and people are, they're just vertebrae. They, they would, they would talk about it in the news. Hey, last guy just passed away from cannabis overdose. There's no such thing. To give you an idea, if you wanted to overdose, let's say we wanted to overdose, a dog would basically say the dog weighs 50 pounds. Uh -huh. 
per one pound of body weight, you would have to give that dog a thousand milligrams of cannabis oil. So you multiply that by 50 pounds, you'd have to give that dog 50,000 milligrams, <laughs> yeah. which yeah. if you're thinking about it, well, what does that look like? You're li you're looking at about a bucket full of oil, cannabis well, oil. Well, here's the best thing. I think it was Rogan, Joe Rogan, that said the only way anybody could die from weed is if a plane smuggling weed into America dropped a ton of it on your head. There's no bodies. <laughs> no. no one's dying. No. Actually, I need to go back to the vet thing. My vet... Um, was who told me Shorty was going to die in eight weeks. He, and, and I mentioned this on the last podcast, he messaged me like last year, this year maybe, I think it was, and was like, I tell people about it. it I'm a believer now. So like some of these guys that they will get in trouble for this. And, and, and then again, I listened to my vet about cannabis like I listened to my doctor about uh uh, about diet I don't they know nothing about it they know nothing about what's good for you the, all they know how to do is big pharma give you the pill give you the drug keep that keep you on the big pharma tit teat so that you keep coming back they're not in, they're not interested in the cure they're interested in say uh, you know their dinners and their uh, promotion and the the things that the big pharma give them uh, for free to push these drugs sorry I keep no, <laughs> you're good no as a matter of fact if you here of some people that have talked to their vets and their vets have been knowledgeable. It's because it's it's kind of changing now. Yeah. So look, yeah. the, the reality is that vets don't know that much about THC. So yeah. they'll either not tell you or they'll demonize it. And, yeah. and in some cases, they'll actually go even further than that and talk about the potential of you getting in trouble and this yeah. and that. Because look, yeah. the reality is based on the law and how it's written now, yeah. your pets are property. And they, you know, within cannabis law, there's nothing that talks about how to give the cannabis to your pet, which mm. is property. Right. It's there's no such thing. So really what you're you're talking about is how do we give this to my dog when vets, doctors, all mm -hmm. sorts of medical professionals mm -hmm. have said, Hey, if you do this, yes. know that you can get your dog really sick, man. And and then here's the thing. So the the, the real reason why that even happens. Let's say, for example, you do have a dog with cancer and that dog has lymphoma. A lot of people don't realize this, but they'll they'll read something on a forum. Hey, give your family member, your loved one, RSO. That's yeah, the stuff yeah. that you need. RSO, that's the stuff that everybody... Well, guess what? Most RSO is not necessarily the stuff that you need. The RSO product in its name, it's the, the, the R, S, and O is an acronym. Rick, Rick Simpson. Simpson Oil. It means nothing. It's it's a branded, uh, you know, process. It's how they extract the medicine. It's not what's in the compound itself. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about RSO, yeah, you can say I have RSO, but really, what do you have? Is it CBD, sativa, indica? Is it hybrid? Is it right. one to one, four to one, whatever? If is you it, don't know what it is, is then it trim right away. Don't give it to your dog, right? Because okay, so they first of all, your dog's sick, doesn't feel good, lymphoma. It's in the lymphatic system. It's gumming it up. It's making it feel all yucky. Then you give them something like THC, which is going to kill cancer. It's going to do it. And now you've killed the cancer that's in the lymphatic system. It goes back through the uh, bloodstream and then it goes into the lymphatic system to get cleaned out again. Now that those dead cancer cells yeah. are going right back into the powerhouse that's trying to clean up the system. So now you're you're basically shoving a bunch of garbage into the garbage disposal and it's not it's not even working. THC or and THC and CBD. No, I'm saying if you give your dog just THC, mm -hmm. that's what'll happen. You cause right. that reaction uh -huh. of over detoxifying uh -huh. which there's a there's a name for it. It's called Herxheimer's and and when you give that amount of THC to your dog, uh -huh. not only are they going to get euphoric which freaks them out and they're like, "Dude, what's going on? Right. You're slipping them a roofie." They're high. They're high. Yeah. Anybody would feel that way. You would feel I would feel that way. I've felt that way. Many I like times. feeling that way. <laughs> but the dog that's like, dude, I feel kind of crappy. And now you're giving me RSO. And the parents, they mean well, but they're like giving them stuff that's going to cause a reaction. So now they take them to the vet and the dog's slumped over, looks like it's dying. And the vet's like, dude, I bet you gave your dog THC. Your dog's dying. So this is RSO we're talking RSO. about. RSO. So wait, does the RSO have the CBD in it? Not usually. Oh, if, so it's just THC. So here's the thing. When you talk about R RSO uh -huh. and other types of extraction processes, the RSO implies that it's THC. Why? Because Rick Simpson 
only believes in THC as a cure for cancer. Uh -huh. CBD has no place in the entourage oh, effects. That's his I, idea of it. I did not know that. So RSO, right off the bat, know that people, please, please, please. RSO should and always is THC driven, whether it's sativa, hybrid, or indica. Usually a hybrid is what they recommend. Indica at night, maybe hybrid throughout the day. You don't want to do sativa throughout the day. It'll wig you out. Right. But it's always THC only. Mm. No CBD. It has CBD because it's inherent to the plant. It's right. grown with it, but it's very small amounts. It's a THC oh, dominant wow, strain good. in RSO. Now, I didn't know that, man. FECO doesn't imply anything because it's not branded. It's just an extraction process. It's an acronym for full extract cannabis. So if you go and get FECO, it's the dark you can oil. get it in sativa, indica, and CBD, mm -hmm. hybrids, whatever. You choose. And which one do you recommend for the fighting? So it just depends on the cancer. So now that's the problem. If if you don't know what you're doing with the FECO or the RSO and you don't know what you're doing with the FECO, then don't give it to your dog. That's rule number one. Word. Because people, are, I know they mean well, but they're giving them stuff they don't have any business giving them. And it's going to get their dog sick. So, yes, because the dog doesn't feel good already. There's mm -hmm. a methodology to it. It took us, me and my wife years to figure out what happens with this type of cancer this right. one just off of trial and error uh, people that don't know that haven't done it and they're trying it they're like yeah. man i read somewhere something and now they're trying it out i don't want to experiment on my dog Word. to try and get them better but at the same time i don't i get it you're desperate mm. but here's what if if i can if anybody gets a takeaway from what i'm about to tell them right now it's this so if you're gonna give your dog something Think about when you were in high school and you just started hanging out with the wrong crowd. I know I did. Turns out they were the right crowd. Go ahead. And they're cool. <laughs> but because they were smoking weed, you know, you, you go with your buddies and you smoke a little weed and you have a bad trip and you're like, dude, that sucked. I'll never do that again because I just I just went through something. I don't even know. I, I don't even know what to call it. Well, let's be clear real quick. You're not going to have a trip if you smoke it. You're going to have a trip if you eat it because it's a whole different process. 11 hydroxy metabolite. I know that from way too many podcasts with Joe Rogan. Uh, go ahead. Sorry. I've no, but I've heard people say that. Yeah, but that's I've never really those, off of those, the smoking. Yeah, those are weak people. Go but ahead. the those are the same edibles people that die from eating peanuts. Go ahead. <laughs> the edibles. That's another story. Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. You're on a you're on a trip and you're on it for a while and you're, yeah. But here's the thing. There's never been a recorded instance, right? That's of right. Any, of any of that ever happening. Not unless it fell on your head. Exactly. So back to the what I was saying. The the bottom line is you you start off with a small amount. If you're ever going to do this for your dog, just remember what I'm saying now. Build up tolerance. You have to start small. RSO, you can't start small. It's right off the bat. Off THC. the bat, one little mm. drop is already 20, 30 milligrams. Mm. E and it's THC only. Okay. You try it. You go ahead and try it, Word. Mrs., you know, uh, whatever your name is that you're going to give it to your dog right now. Try it first. See what happens to you. They're going to trip balls and they're going to be like, hey, man, maybe I shouldn't give it to my dog. It, exactly. So let's not go down that route. But if you're going to do it right, if you can get medicine from a dispensary and you're able That's to. That's what my next question was going to be. Uh, what happened to these people that they just go, hey, I went to a dispensary. I get it. Well, first of all, the bud tenders which is what they call them, they're not knowledgeable about, non knowledgeable about, God, you know the word I'm trying to say. That one. About this. And you got to get with someone, you know, hey, I, I say this all the time on my videos, on, on my live broadcast. If you don't talk to Jesse, make sure you get with someone who knows what they're talking about. Third party tested. It's coming from the flower. It's CBD, THC from cannabis, not hemp. RSO, I didn't know, didn't have the CBD. So you're going to get, your dog's going to get the whammy right off the bat. So going now, even going further into why CBD from cannabis versus not with the stuff that's from hemp. Yeah. So the two main differences, and people argue about this all the time. Why? I don't know why. It, it's something that I've experienced and I've tested, and the conclusion always comes back the same. You cannot get better from hemp CBD. You cannot. It's impossible. Mm -hmm. I don't know chemically if we have an engineered, figured out, or designed a way of understanding how CBD works. But if you get it from hemp, it ain't the same. It's not the same as the stuff from cannabis. Now, if you get it from cannabis right. and it's extracted in a way where they remove a lot of the good stuff and they isolate it, there's ways of doing that because it makes it stronger. Now, that's not as good either. What if you did hemp, cannabis, THC? 
no good. No, okay. I've, I've done that. So okay. there's people that can't get the CBD that's from hemp or right. cannabis, right? But they can get the the THC from a buddy that has some right, right. material from whatever, mm -hmm. and they try it, and the dog still and and the dog has the reaction. So here's here's what I do. I'm gonna give everybody exactly how I dose dogs, and this is my theory on it. And people can try and follow along, but it gets very complicated in the second and third and fourth weeks as we get into the higher dosages. So basically, if you want to start your dog off with a THC regimen, you want to start off with CBD by itself Word. from cannabis. Mm -hmm. Why? The stuff from cannabis has all the micro compounds. And if it has all of those micro compounds, what it does, is it starts healing the body really quickly. So if the dog has inflammation, if the dog has pain, if the dog's lacking appetite, dog can't go to the bathroom, dog has runny diarrhea, whatever, you know, excuse me. But if there's a lot of issues with the dog before we even start, the, the, the CBD helps to get the dog to feel good right off the bat. Mm. And then guess what? Your dog's doing cartwheels, acting like a puppy eating. now, eating, doing all the good, just like we started, right? Yeah. And then we start a little THC. Well, how much? I have RSO. Can I give him RSO? No, no. I just told you. From the beginning, always start at a very small amount. Yeah. If you could find tincture, Tincture is a coconut, usually an oil extracted cannabis oil, whether it's coconut oil, me, uh, medium chain triglyceride oil. There's different oils they can uh, use to extract the cannabis oil, but it's just a carrier oil with cannabis oil in it that's a CBD strain. That's what you want. Now, here's the problem. It's hard to find. Like I said, usually they'll have something that's CBD, but it's an isolate. So the, the hemp companies are isolating just the CBD compound from the hemp and they're calling that hemp CBD. They do basically the same thing with cannabis CBD and they extract only the CBD and kind of throw everything else away. The lipids, the chlorophyll, the you know uh, terpenes, the other cannabinoids, the micro compounds within the THC, they get rid of everything. So now the plant has been altered. It's now basically GMO'd and it's not gonna do the same. I'm sorry, but if you go to a Whopper, you know, you go to Burger King and you order a Whopper and you, you take away the mustard, the ketchup and the onions, it's just the a bread and, you know, meat. So you, it's not gonna be the same. And that's basically what happens. So you have to have the right stuff. The, the stuff that you need has mm -hmm. to be from cannabis. Word. If you get it from hemp and that's all you can get, we can, we can do it. At that point, so what's going to happen if they do it from the hemp? Is it going to help at all? Are they going to be comfortable at all? I mean, it's it's. It, what I've seen is what because the CBD in the very beginning, as it starts to give the dog those healing properties and it helps the dog to build up tolerance uh. with just CBD in the beginning. When we get those cannabinoids in the body, they actually help to mitigate or to get rid of the psychoactivity of the THC as long as we're giving more CBD than THC. Mm. Now, if you have CBD from hemp, it's not, it's, it just doesn't seem to have that effect where it's it just, mitigates it's it. It's just not enough. So when we start THC, even at a small amount, yeah. dog gets loaded. So the, 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 the gist of this, guys, is, I mean, some people are in Australia, some people, I get a, get a lot of messages from UK and it's like, I don't know. What we, well, I don't know what we can tell you, man. You're, you have you have the worst. We think it's bad, and I mean in the U.S. I mean it's the 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 genie's out of the bottle here. It's just it's happening. But out there, they're in the dark ages with this, and they're like people are not going to jail. People are going to jail for speech out there. I mean, can you imagine what's going on with you know a, a plant that they they deem the devil plant or whatever? But I want to read you, you guys. And I want to hear what you have to say about this. This is number six in the rules of my dog beat cancer regarding rick simpson's oil which is rso or phoenix tears realm of caring roc promotion uh okay blah 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 blah, blah. Uh, mr simpson methods we do not believe now now what is this naphtha na naphtha it's a type of solu um, solvent that's okay. used it's basically a byproduct of uh uh, like How do you say it? Naphtha. Okay, so we do not believe naphtha is a su safe solvent. No we way. feel ethyl alcohol is particular, in particular, or an edible oil such as coconut oil or olive oil is the healthiest solvent. That's correct. It. You will find studies supporting this point of view. We are not in any way aligned with or support Rick Simpson or his associates. We don't wish to debate. Oh, sorry, this is the rules. So anyway, I just wanted to. So uh, no, look. Here's the bottom line with the RSO and the reasons. Look, it's it's a usually extracted, let's say it's not extracted uh -huh. with a bad 
uh, type of uh, solution or, or solvent, it still most likely is going to be THC. Mm -hmm. So right there, you don't need that right right off the bat. You need that down the road if your dog's big enough and if we can get there. But in the beginning, you need a tincture. So when people get hu hung up on, I got to get the best, the strongest and all that, they're lo they're missing the point. They're they're trying to get their dog better with the, you know, the Lamborghini. But you know, we we got to take baby steps in the beginning. We got to get in the you know the pinno and get start small. You know, right. so they got to get something right off the bat, and it's usually a tincture format, which is a viscous, more I guess milder way of uh, dosing. Because now, let's say for example, you know exactly how much the contents of the bottle that you have has in it as far as uh, quantity of drops, you mo you divide that by the amount of milligrams that you have in the entire bottle. And now you have exactly how much your medicine is. So let's say it's uh, 500 drops in a bottle and you've got 500 milligrams in the bottle. So now you know one drop equals one milligram. Word. And now you can give your dog exactly one milligram at each drop. We can go up to 20 drops and still know we're giving pretty close to just about 20 drops. With the RSO, a little drop, 15, 20 milligrams, a little bigger drop, 40, 50. You see how that gets real crazy real fast? You give a nice size drop, it could be about 50 to 60 to 80 milligrams. <laughs> That'll put anybody on the moon, let alone a 10-pound chihuahua. Right, right. So that's why, you know, people ask me, well, is it uh, so dangerous that something can go wrong and now my dog can die from the THC? This is one of the big ones. Right, I, see, I hear and that so, a lot. Yeah, so people, they lot. start freaking out, right? Uh, they, they, yeah. And I'm not going to point fingers at anybody or, or say this person or that per person does this, but a lot of people do this. And it's weird because they would rather do chemo, they would rather do prednisone, tramadol, gabapentin, you know. Uh, well, that's what the all vets the, are pushing. That's all of what the they're prescription pushing. stuff. But when it comes to cannabis, it's like, hey, my dog had a little bit of a problem this with his appetite this morning. Didn't want to eat. You think it's a cannabis? And before I can answer, they're already like, I stopped it. Yeah. I stopped they all the cannabis. Out. And they I'm not going to start until I hear from you, mm -hmm. until you get back to me. I'm not going to. It's like, look. It, it could be, but here's the thing. If you stop and go, stop and go, and at some point your dog's not going to build up tolerance, and then when we're trying to get right. to the higher dosages and you give them that amount, they're going to freak out. Mm. So it's always better if, here's the big thing, the, the whole trust thing. People, they yeah. get very nervous about yeah. me helping them because they think, wow, 30 drops three times a day, that's a lot of medicine. No, it's not. It's not a lot. You think it's a lot. You in your head might have already decided that's a lot, but it's yeah. not. Well, there's so much misinformation out there, and you know it's hard to decipher what is going to work. I, I, I mean, I, God, it's just too much crap out there, and I see it all the time. People, oh, I heard T. I still on our on our page, my dog beat cancer and uh, OC consultants and healing project. We still see. Oh, I heard THC can kill your dog, and I'm like, wow, people are still saying yeah. that. It's like back in the 90s, jujitsu. It's like when people didn't know. It was like when I hear people say, "Oh, jujitsu doesn't work now." It's like, what are you talking about? You're <laughs> you're, you're you're still on AOL. What what, what 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 what's wrong with you? Get with the times, you guys. Your dog is not going to die on THC. It may freak out a little bit, ride it out like those cops. Did you hear that story about the cops who made uh, brownies with the uh, weed that they stole from? Uh, their inventory and they called the 911 and they were like, we're dying. We think we're dying. You're going to be fine. You're on a special strand right now. It's called ACDC. <laughs> Put on some Dark Side of the Moon and watch some uh, Wizard of Oz and you're going to be fine. It's the truth. I I have yet to hear somebody say, my dog got sick yeah. and they stopped the medicine and it persists for days and days. Now, they have done that mm -hmm. and then the dog is still sick even after mm -hmm. the fact and then yeah. I'm like, Hey, it's not the medicine anymore. Mm -hmm. We got to get right back on the medicine yeah, because yeah. we've at least ruled that out. Mm -hmm. And now we got to get back on because now your dog's like really sick. And know? by the way, if your dog doesn't eat, so I get this question a lot. Um, I see this on, on our forums. Um, what if my dog doesn't eat? What, what do I do? Okay, first of all, you guys, I always recommend the Dog Cancer Survival Guide. I created My Dog Beat Cancer um, with, and then I put this on Jesse's page as well. I'm just paying this forward because I found something that worked for my dog. Two years before Shorty got cancer, I lost my boy Buster to hermangiosarcoma, which we have a woman in our group whose dog is going on three years. Is it three years? 
three years from angiosarcoma. That is the worst. My dog got diagnosed in October, was dead in November. Um, she's she is alive. She's she her dog is alive and well um, because of the cannabis oil. So I tell people all the time, look, this is what I did to get my dog better. We did the cannabis oil, we did a little bit of prednisone, we did no chemo, and we did the dog cancer survival guide. Now, there's a lot of people on here that are going to say, feed raw, feed raw. In my opinion, in our case, we did not feed raw. My dog was on raw before the, the cancer, and she's on raw again now, but during the cancer, the what Dr. Dressler says, which makes complete sense to me, is you're stressing an already taxed immune system system because we know that dogs can bury their food and come back and eat that and not get sick and not die because of their stomachs. Well, the, his point is, why would you waste the energy trying to fight what's in their food when all the good energy could be going to fighting this cancer? So what he does is he's got this method, this diet of cooking the food, and when the dog's sick, no raw anything, no raw anything. So if your dog doesn't eat for a couple of days, dogs can go a couple of days without eating. Don't freak out. But what I did is I ended up with the dog um, cancer survival guide is it was it's it's it comes out to like a little, like a mush, like a canned kind of dog food. And I would, sometimes she would go like a day and then I would force feed her. I would put it in her mouth little bits at a time and she would eat it and we made it through that. Now, if you want to try that, that's up to you, but don't freak out if your dog doesn't eat, but maybe for a day or two, but then you might have to do the force feeding thing anyway. Yeah. So the bottom line when it comes to the cannabis oil is don't freak out. Yeah. You know, try to be a little more patient because usually as soon as the first thing that happens, say it's a dog gets a little tiny diarrhea, they want to blame it on something, right? It's yeah. it's either the cancer or whatever. So they, they assume it's the oil because it's changed. In some cases, it is the oil. That's them. Or, or the dog is dying of cancer, yeah. which is mostly the case. With, with But, you know, for them to just stop or for them not to yeah. want to, you know, and that's the other part. Okay, so people... Understand now, I am always very busy. I'm always on the phone talking to, you know, the next person, the next person, the next person. And so people sometimes get afraid of calling me. They say, well, I don't want to call him because he's too busy or whatever. Well, yes, I am busy. But if it's an emergency, try and get a hold of me. Don't just not get a hold of me. Word. And from there, if you want to talk to me or if you think it's important to talk, let's schedule a time to talk and text me and say, hey, can we talk in a couple yeah. of hours or whatever? But don't get upset if you call me and I don't pick up because I usually don't pick up if I'm on the other line with somebody. Yeah, and make sure you text. I always say text first yeah, because he'll get those and he can schedule you to talk. And uh, Yeah, but at some point, if your dog is uh, having issues and your dog needs to, you know, if we need to figure it out, give me a call, text me, get a hold of me somehow. Because I've had people text me after two weeks yeah. and say, I haven't been giving the medicine. Uh, I didn't want to let you know. My dog, you know, stopped eating, so I stopped. And now, you know, my dog's still not eating. What should I do? And it's like, well, we definitely got to get back on the medicine. At, at that point, you know, let's try and figure something out. But, man, it's tough when it gets to that point. You know, the dog just hasn't eaten and it's starting to decline and all that kind of stuff. It's just better. If communication stays open. It's way better. Yes. Do we want to uh, yeah, maybe let's... call Brandy or who do we want to start with? How about Christina? Okay, so uh, Christina Marie? Yes. Cooper. Her dog's Correct. name is Cooper. So we're going to call Christina Marie. We'll share her story. And then if we have time, Elizabeth. Was it no, Elizabeth? Brandy. Brandy. Okay. Hello? Christina? Hi, Jesse. How are you? Can you hear me okay? Yeah, can you hear me okay? I think so. Can we get her on the... Is she coming through? Yeah, we got her. Cool. Sounds so great. you're on the podcast... Uh, Wanted to talk to you a little bit about Cooper and how that all happened. And so uh, tell us a little bit about Cooper and how did, how did you find out about the diagnosis and all that kind of uh, good stuff? Sure. Um, it was August of uh, late July, actually, uh, 2017. And the first thing that I saw, I noticed, was a Thursday night. And he was we had wood floors, and he was coming down the stairs, and he kind of slipped up his back leg and I thought okay well his paw pads are slippery and we have wood floors and didn't think anything of it Friday the next day I got home from work and I let him out onto the back deck to go potty and his left um, high leg kept slipping out from under him and he kept looking back 
like, what the heck's going on, you know? And I'm like, okay, that's weird. So I called the vet, made an appointment for Saturday morning, got him in there, and Dr. Amon said, I think he needs to see a neurologist. And I looked at him, and I said, what do you mean? And he's like, I'm doing some neurological testing, and he's, he's deficit. And I, I said, okay. And I got really concerned, and um, he recommended a specialty center um, that I called. When I called them, there was a month wait for the neurologist. And I said, I can't wait. He can't wait. So I was forced to bring him in through emergency. We had him in uh, through emergency by Tuesday morning. And Wednesday afternoon on my way home from work, they called me and told me that he had a mass in his brain, an inoperable glioma brain tumor. Whoa. And he had three to six months to live, and here's some prednisone, and spoil him. Hmm. And I thought, oh, no. No, he's eight years old. There's no way. And I was just, I brought to my knees, and he's, he's like my kid. And... So I was frantically searching Facebook and the internet. What could I do? Holistic things. And that's when I came across Pino page and watched the pin post and saw his story about Shorty and contacted Jesse right away. And he responded back, can you talk? And we talked on my lunch hour for about a half hour, 45 minutes. And he encouraged me to reach out to other people that had, had used his oils. And I ended up reaching out to Elizabeth Tatum and her and I spoke um, on the phone for about a half hour and she told me about her Ray-Ban who had the same diagnosis as Cooper and he was doing very well. Ray-Ban was about maybe four months behind Cooper um, in his diagnosis. Um, So when I found Jesse's page, um, I called him and we started on the oils. It wasn't until three months post-diagnosis and he was given three to six months to live. So I started the oils at the end of October. I believe it was like the 20th or 29th, 2017. And I just kept going and, you know, followed Jesse's advice. And I was so scared to get a follow-up MRI, but he was acting normal and things that he wasn't doing, he started doing again. And I was like, okay. And my neighbor would come over and she's like, there's nothing wrong with this dog. (laughs) I'm like, oh, I hope not. You know, I'm so scared to go in for that MRI. Um, So I kept him on the oils, changed his diet, keto, um, started taking him for acupuncture, um, swimming, hydrotherapy, because he was losing muscle mass in his hind legs due to the steroid. We started to reduce the steroid. Um, I finally had the MRI done, I think it was June, middle of June of 2018. And I was so nervous going there, knowing, you know, and having to hand him back to go into the back room and him just look at me. I just felt so helpless. And so the tech would come out every once in a while to tell me how he was doing under anesthesia. And she couldn't tell me anything, but she did tell me, you know, I will tell you there's not a lot going on with there. And I said, okay. And so, you know, meanwhile, I was, you know, texting Jesse and letting him know that I was there getting the MRI. And he said, Christina, it's not going to be there. And he was right. And I went in with the um, neurologist. And she came in and she sat down. And the first thing she said was, the mass is gone. And I said, are you shocked? And she said, I'm shocked. She said, the only thing that we see are two tiny pinpoints, which we think are scar tissue. She said, but other than that, the mass is gone. And so here we are today. And we are still on a maintenance dose of Jesse's oil. How long has it been? How long has it been? How how long total? Yeah, how long has it been? He was diagnosed August 2nd, 2017. So we just passed. Sorry, I'm terrible at math, people. It's over two years, brother. (laughs) Four years yeah, for Yeah, and he, wow. he's doing so good. I mean, his spirit is still there. Like, he's going to be 11. He was diagnosed at 8. How much does he and weigh? Think how much does he weigh? Yeah. 70. Uh, 70. Oh, he's a big boy. 79, 80. Mm-hmm. And how are the legs now, Christina? Back to normal? Everything's normal? Yeah, but he still, um, he doesn't slip. His leg doesn't slip. 
but you know, I can see like it'll it'll tremble sometimes, and uh, the ne- the neurologist said it's just from the scar tissue. Hmm. But other said, than that, you know, lip- appetite yeah. normal and no seizures. You know, he, never. That was weird because most uh, brain tumor patients that I I know of or hear of, they present with some kind of seizure or circling, um, falling over. Cooper, the only thing that I saw was his back leg flipping out. I never witnessed him having a seizure unless. And he what is your at work, what, is, what does your vet have to say? What oh, is, the vet, my, his, he has two. He had the um, conventional vet, and now he has the. Um, what do they say? Vet as well. Can the, you hear me? The other vet, um, the regular vet, was shocked, and so was the person. Did you tell um, them? In there with them? Did you tell them what he, you were doing? Uh, yes, I did. Nice. I did because if something were happened with him on the oils, or if he were to have an episode, I mean, who knows? You know, I didn't know. I wanted to wear what I was doing in case there was an emergency of some kind, or you know, never know. And one um, second, Marie. Uh, one I, one second. Uh, this brings up an, another question: cannabis oil mixing with other uh, medicines that that the vet's giving. Not never an issue, we, right? Well, it doesn't in the very beginning when we're just doing CBD. It doesn't we, cause we, problems, but, but we don't want it. We want to get every everything off, off, mm-hmm. get the dog off every. Because mm-hmm. at some point, the cannabis oil does better for everything, right? And the way I describe it, and I describe this for humans too, is like it's like telling people when people say stop smoking weed or stop edibles, everything. It's like saying for most people, I know there's some people that, like I said before, are allergic to peanuts and they will die. But for most people, it's like telling someone to stop eating salad. It's good for you. Exactly. So it's not really going to clash with anything that the dog. No, feeling. but at, at some point, if you're giving, this is what I've, cause I, I work with people as well. And uh, Christina, I appreciate the call. I, I, I apologize. We're going to, uh, get to uh, the Brandy. other topics here, uh, but thank you so much, Christina, and uh, we'll we'll stay in touch and uh, talk a little more after the show. But thank you so much, and you did great, you did awesome, and it's it's really all a testament to all the hard work that you did because that's it takes a lot of work to do what you did and the oil and the oil. Thank yeah. you, I love, I love my boy. So anything for him, and thank you both very much, Tino and Jesse, and um, so grateful to have found you guys. Thank you're, you. You're welcome. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. So where were we? Um, we were just talking about giving the oil with um, um, the other medicines. And then uh, my mom, I, I, I kept brought this up before, my mom was diagnosed with lupus, and she didn't tell the vet, the, doc, the doctors that she was doing this. And then they were like, we don't know. Maybe we misdiagnosed you. Yeah, <laughs> I remember me and her, we were talking, and she was like, should I tell them? Should I not tell them? And I said, look, you don't need to tell them anything. If they're going to make you feel bad about it, especially if you know they're going to do that, then don't tell them anything. She actually never took the drugs that they gave her. That's funny. And only did the cannabis. So, and then she called me one day. You know, She, she called me and said, hey, Jesse, you want to hear something funny? They told me how many years later, many, many years yeah, later, yeah. hey, we think that you really never had the <laughs> lupus. <laughs> yeah. And she was like, oh, come on, guys. Yeah, yeah. Well, by the way, I'm a stoner is what yeah. she should have said. Um, so, yeah, look, when when it gets started, it doesn't really affect mu- me- uh, much when it comes to the cannabis oil. But, like, let me give you an example. My stepdad, he has, uh, you know, insulin problems. You know, he's type 2 diabetic, so he takes insulin and he does pills, I think, sometimes. And so he didn't realize this. He was taking the cannabis oil, which was regulating his blood sugar creating insulin, having his pancreas do the work, and and it was working, but he kept taking the medicine, kept doing the insulin, and then he went into a diabetic coma because his blood sugar went too low. Uh. And so, yeah, at some point, here's the thing. At some point, the cannabis oil can produce a negative effect, but in the way where it works so well that you don't need any more of your drugs. So then, in that case, the drugs you take are actually causing you Get off them. Yeah, so... Yeah, it's just better if you don't. Disclaimer, we none of us are doctors, you know, go t- take this with a grain of salt, do what your doctor says, you know, but, you know, my mom, my dog, they we, we got him off that stuff. My dog was never even on the chemo. Um, so let's move on to Brandy. Yeah, let's give her a call. Brandy Sharp. She says, my dog has been cured with the oil. 
Brandy had a little dog. I think she just posted recently. Little white fluffy uh, dog. Had lymphoma and just oh lymphoma too. Mm-hmm. A couple days ago was cleared and uh, was told that doing good. And she lives pretty close to where I live. Hello, Brandy. How you doing? It's Jesse. Hey, Brandy. Hi, Jesse. Hey. And that's Tino. Hey, Tino. You're Hi. on the show. Uh, just wanted to talk to you a little bit about uh, Louis and how things happened and, you know, how you found out and all that. Do you have a minute? Louis. I do. Cool. Great so what, what happened with Louis? How would you find out he was diagnosed and all that good stuff? Well, um, Louis is seven years old and um, in great health. And one day he just got all these red splotches all over his tummy and um, took him to the doctor. And they thought it was an autoimmune disease which was pretty hairy, and then we, you know, it was like 50% chance of living, so that was super scary. What kind of dog is Louie? He's a Maltese poodle, but he's big. He's 25 pounds. Oh, that's big. <laughs> he's a little <laughs> And he's my baby. So he, he's, he just was super lethargic, so we made it through that, and then... A couple days later, he since he was on so much medication, he was on steroids. Um, he was also on, let's see, antibiotics and omeprazole, all that kind of stuff. And he started having a problem, he started throwing up blood and pooping blood, so kidney failure. So we brought him back in. Wow. They did tests on him, and then when we... He was diagnosed on the 14th of June, and they saw a huge mass on his spleen and um, throughout his lymph nodes. And he was so far gone, she said, and so aggressive that he only has like two or three weeks to live. So this is like so shocking to us because he's our healthy little guy, and then all of a sudden he couldn't move, he didn't walk, he was horrible. So when we got this, basically a death sentence for our, our baby, you know, no chemo, no nothing can help him. We just started researching because we couldn't accept that this is it. You know, we just couldn't accept. And then we came across your page, you know, saw your video and um, contacted Jesse right away and met with him and... And you've been guiding us through this whole process, just even like a, a miracle worker and so patient with all our crazy questions and me crying on the phone to you, <laughs> you know, texting you weird pictures. And <laughs> so we've, you know, we, we just, it was a long road and we got him off all the drugs, you know, with your guidance, got him off of all that, you know, a little prednisone and meprazole and all that stuff added in ketogenic diet added in probiotic and these oils from day one so we started taking we started taking the oils on um june 20th from by his first drop started perking up and that's what you told me too you're like don't be surprised if he perked up so we were just so scared that we weren't, you know, we were so scared. This whole process was so devastating. <clears throat> and, you know, we just kept going and going and going. And every time I freak out, you're like, just stay the course. Relax. It's okay. It's it's the cancer. It's leaving his body. So we just kept the course. And he started perking up. But, like, around September 5th, he started playing again. Wow. So we'd been on the oils for all this time. That's and awesome. And so he started playing, and then on September 26th, I texted you, Jesse, and I said, I said, he's doing really good. And you're like, why don't you go back to the doctor to see? And I was so scared to go back because he was doing so well. I could physically see him. I mean, he was on in a stroller before, and now he can walk and play. Oh, that's crazy. And you were... You were telling me, you're like, go to the doctor. And I was so scared that we didn't even end up going until, so 26, you told me to go, but I was too chicken. So October 16th is when we went and we did the ultrasound. We did the um, blood work and my dog is a hundred percent cancer free. Wow. And the mass in the liver that's gone too? 
Yeah, no more. No, his all his kidneys are healed up. There's no problem with beautiful liver. No kidney problem. And no wasn't there damage. problems with the hair too? And that kind of went back too. Oh, his hair was falling out in clumps. He wow. had sores on his body. He had that lymphoma mask. Those bumps. Yeah, and all that's gone. Wait, the lymphoma what? Like a mask. So underneath the oh, eyes, it's yeah, like yeah. they get these really dry, these, like, bumps and... little crusty little. Yeah, yeah, but it was like half oh, that's of his weird. face, so it was like a mask. My my fe- my girl didn't get that, but she did get these little like cysts. That, the way that I we I talked about this before, it was like these these aggravated like nipples. It looked like, and and my what I. The conclusion I came to was that the body, just like you said, it's like kicking this stuff out. And I would put the Absolutely. THC directly on it, and they would dry up and fall off. It's amazing. I've even That's heard of did, yeah dropping it on there. I've even heard of people's dogs going like they couldn't walk. You know, their legs, the use of the hind legs. Went. Yeah. I yeah. just had somebody this With morning lymphoma? text me. Yeah. Yeah. And they go blind, and they start doing a bunch. The skin and all of that goes back to normal. Even the wow. blindness goes back. Goes wow. Back. I'm, I'm telling you, Jesse, I got a stroller and I had to put my dog in a stroller and stroll him down the street. And now he is running and flipping around all his hair is back. We have the whole community was behind our little doggy every day. They're like, oh, he started to bark again. He's feeling good. That's crazy. And, you know, we were so scared. I mean, I was so scared because I physically can see him getting better. But I just didn't trust because, you know, we were taught not to trust. And, you know, <laughs> and, and, and Jesse, you were just like, just trust. It's okay. He's he, good. You physically see him being a crazy dog again. And I was so scared. And now I'm right. I mean, it, you were 100% right. That's awesome. Well, Brandy, thank I, you so much for the call. I appreciate thank you. everything. Oh, wait, wait, one more thing. Oh, you what, did, what did Sorry. the vet say? Did you tell him what you did? Oh, so I told, of course, I told, by the way, I tell anybody that will listen. And what did the vet say? The vet was like, I can't legally tell you anything, Mm -hmm. but she, first of all, she cried when she told me that he is clear. That's pretty nice. She was like, this is, she, and she tells me this is a miracle because this dog was half dead. That's awesome. So she cried and said, she was like, oh my God, I'm so happy for you. And what? What you're doing is correct. I just legally can't tell you to do it, but you awesome. keep doing awesome. what you're doing and tell everyone about it. Awesome. Brandy, one last thing. Were you giving CBD before I met you, but from hemp? Did I? We tried. We tried uh, Rick Simpson oil. Okay, that's what you were doing. It was. I did it once, and it was a disaster because it was at the right stuff and the right ratio, yeah. and I freaked out so going back to earlier we were talking about this whole thing about how people do it and they don't get the right reaction and they freak out and they demonize it luckily you got past that and then you still got a hold of me but yeah that just goes to show you know it's not in the the medicine the medicine's gonna work we just got to know how to give it to your dog so thank you so much brandy you're awesome keep up the good work you are awesome you know thank you so much for that amazing all your updates and everything and you two are why my dog is alive. Thank you. Thank you're you. awesome. Great news. You're awesome. Thank you're you amazing. so much. Okay, before Take right. care, Brandy. Thank you. You too. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. Before we wrap it up, um, I wanted to uh, address some things. Um, I was also afraid to go to my vet, too. Kind of like, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Kind of like, don't jinx it thing. Um, on her fourth, on her uh She's 15 now, my dog, Shorty. On her 15th birthday, I went and got her blood work. I didn't do any blood work for four years, bro. I was like, I don't want to, I don't want to <laughs> jinx it. And then after four years, I was like, oh shit, there is no, there's no doubting this. There's no debate. My dog is still here. So I went, all her blood tests came, I, I had, I have the numbers. If you look on the testimonials, if you look on the videos that I've done of Shorty, I, I list them off, the lymphocytes, the, the red blood cells. And the last thing that my vet said is that her blood work does not look like a dog that has cancer. And the other thing I wanted to, um, and she's 15 going on 16 this March will be five years. She's alive Beautiful. when she was given eight weeks. Uh, also, diet, you guys. I keep hearing the same pattern, the same thing. Seven, eight, nine years old, I'm, my dog's getting cancer. 
Get your dog off the kibble. I don't care if you're spending $100 for 40 pounds. If that stuff is not going bad in a week, it's got preservatives in it. Now, you, we, there's, you can debate back and forth. I am not going to debate it. My dogs, I have never had a dog live past 10, and I've had dogs since I was 18, since, um, all my life. And Shorty is the oldest dog that I've had. She's 15. She's going to be 16 this month. Um, 16. That's the oldest I've ever had a dog. <laughs> Get your dogs off the kibble. Go feed your dogs raw. Not that pre-made crap that you put water in. I mean, if you can afford it, you want to go raw, check out simplyrawsome.org or look on Facebook, Simply Rossum instead of awesome, spell it R-A-W. Get the 80-10-10, they call it. You'll, it'll make sense when you read it. Get your dogs off the kibble, period. Your dogs aren't here long enough. Why shorten their lives with crappy food? Anything else to add? Yeah, one last thing. Uh, just know, guys, everybody uh, who's watching this video, I've helped not just dogs, not just cats, but I've helped people. Uh, My mom. People want, you know, they've always asked me, hey, do you know how to help people? Well, if a person can react uh, to the medicine even half as good as a dog, yes, and usually people react better because yep. they can give me feedback yep. instantly. So if I give them instructions and they tell me that next day, hey, man, it's too much or it's not enough or whatever. We go at their pace and we get them up to speed. I've helped everybody from, uh, you know, anal, rectal, breast, brain tumors, lymphoma, leukemia. It all, autoimmune. And autoimmune. Uh, so let's say autism. Let's talk about MS. Fibromyalgia, lupus. They're all autoimmune disorders. Hashimoto's. Hashimoto's. Lupus. Yeah, lupus. And here's the biggest thing. If you do, if you do take one thing away from the whole entire show is that it's not in whether or not it's going to work for you because people, for some reason, still believe it. Is it going to work for me? Is yeah, it really going to work for yeah. me? It's not whether or not it's you got to know how to do it so that you can do it in a way where it's gradual. Get the medicine in your system on a, on a consistent basis so it does what it's supposed to do. And that's the bottom line. Take the red that's pill. It. Stop listening to Big Brother. <laughs> Listen to the song that I wrote at the beginning. Of this don't the government. They're not the big pharma. They're not interested in helping you. They're interested in making money. Take the red pill. Get off the government teat. Revolution. All right. Uh, oh, and uh, play that song, and we'll be out. Thank you guys for joining us. Uh, we'll probably do this again. If you have any questions about the oil, go to the Healing Project and uh, dot org. Uh, there's the no. Uh, it's healing dash healing project dash project dot info dot info. Sorry, I should know that by heart. Um, and until next time, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. What would you do if your government lied to you and told you that cannabis made minorities kill, rape, and pillage? Lend me your ear and I'll show you, my dear, how it saved my sweet little dog from cancer. Oh, I get high with a little help from my friends. Oh, my dog didn't die with a little help from my friends. Try to erase your propaganda for your mongers, get your headaches, and red pill you to death with a little help from my friends.